Hi, welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily Cryptocurrency Blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look's gonna be drinking. Look, look's gonna be smoking. Look, look's gonna be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here I come. In three, look, two, look, one. Bang, welcome everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome, yeah, to the new location. Welcome, my name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. You are now about to witness the greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the multiverse. Bang! Greatest show of the day on multiverse. All right, guys. So, <coughs> as you can see, we're at the new location. Now, I know this camera footage is complete bullshit. This resolution is complete dog shit. And I'm going to fool around with it in the next few days and figure out how to get it back to the normal. As you can see, I don't have that black screen behind me anymore with my nice little picture of the angel of death. Uh, now, I'm going to have to show you guys my kitchen. <laughs> so that's the kitchen. Here's a hat from DP Entertainment that he gave me. Bang, bang. Soul Brother hat. There's my takeout and there's my wine. All right. And there's the kitchen. So there's the kitchen. All right. So we're going to be doing this uh, from the living room facing into the kitchen. All right. For now. Until I get the uh, everything back to normal. Until I get it back to how I used to have it. All right. So, <clears throat> well, daggone. It's been a while. You guys know I'm up here in Atlanta now, uh, escaping those legal issues back down there in South Beach. You know what I'm saying? Got to escape those things. And so I'm going to probably be here for about a year. This is just a rental. This ain't nothing special. Ah, fucking, I got like 20 foot ceilings. So if my, if my voice is echoing, I don't know. I can hear it echoing in my ear, but I hope it's not echoing to you guys. That's because this, this living room, it's, it's, it's got a fucking 20 foot fucking ceiling. I got like windows way up there and shit. So it's like echoing. It's like a cathedral in here. And so, you know, and it's very open space. This is a very open concept uh, space here. And so if, it, if, it, if the sound is fucked up, don't worry, I'll fix that tomorrow as well. But today I wanted to get to with you because, man, I've missed you guys all so very much. You guys know that. You guys know I love talking money, love talking crypto. But, and the color, obviously, the lights aren't on either. This is just the lights from that's in this apartment. I don't have the professional box lights on me right now. And so don't worry, we're going to get it all fixed up. But as long as you can hear me and read what I'm reading to you, well, that should be good enough for you to get your money going, you know, to get your money right, to get your mind right. And I know there's been a lot of shit been going down. Man, fucking this daggone war. We'll talk about it. We'll yap about it in a second. You know how we do around these parts. We're going to yap. But uh, so we got a good show. We are now in Atlanta. This is Atlanta, Georgia. Can't believe I'm living in fucking Georgia. Holy shit. Well, here I am. Uh, it's beautiful where I live. It's a little more upscale, so it's a good part of Atlanta. <laughs> Made sure not to move around where any miscreants are. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so uh, it's good. I'm in a good neighborhood. Uh, and I'm glad to be, I'm glad that we are all back together again. We'll be doing this as normal, as usual, uh, daily. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. So, uh, in fact, this is probably going to be a pep talk. And then I'll do the stories afterwards. So I'm going to do two shows right now. So the first, but I'm going to tell you what the stories are going to be. So, bye, let's do this how we used to do it. Holy, when I yell in it here, when I yell in here, it's so loud because it's so big, the space. <laughs> right? Like that. The ceilings are like 20 fucking feet in the air up here, right? So when I go, bang, it makes a loud noise. Fuck, man. Bad God. Right? When I'm in my house yelling, <laughs> it's not so, I, I, you know, it's not so bad. Okay, but let's get, so now. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Shamari. We love each other. Let's get to our money. All right. Bye. First story to be back with, and it's a beauty because I love singing it. Chaining to the rescue. It's chaining to the rescue. Again, sorry about the resolution and everything, guys. I hope you can hear this thing good enough. Yeesh. All right. So chain link back on a new rescue operation. They're going to be used by GSR for guess what? Price feeds. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. All right, GSR is going to use Chainlink for price feeds. 
Then we're going to talk about FC Barcelona. Yes, the big world-famous soccer team, football team. I'm going to use Chili's, Socios Network. Bang, we're going to talk about that. And then Romania. The central bank has approved Elrond. So Elrond hodlers, look, look, look. Bang for you. So look, look. You know how we do around these parts? Let's get back to it like how we always did. Let's get to the bang. Whoops. Bang. Yes. And then we head on over here. We do a little. Look. Wait, 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 wait. Where do we go? Wait a second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Bang. There we go. There we go. There we go. I got to set everything up like how it used to be. <laughs> Let me make sure you're seeing all this. All right. You can all see me. Oh, I should move into the middle of the shot here. There we go. There we go. All right, guys. So look. You know how we do around these parts. Talk about a little bit of Bitcoin. Oh, no. We do a little bit of refresh, refresh, refresh. I got to get back in the groove of it, right? I got to get it back in the groove of this thing. I haven't done this for a while. All right. Price of Bitcoin, $39,963. Nice. Actually, not really. It was like 40-something the other day, wasn't it? Look. All right. So I don't have the cards with me. I mean, I have them, but... They're all packed. Like, I haven't even unpacked yet. All right, guys? <laughs> like, you see this thing right here? Yeah, that's a couch. Just sitting in the middle of the living room. I haven't even arranged it here yet. I wanted to arrange this so I could do a show for you. And then uh, this weekend, I'll put this whole place together properly and everything. I still have stuff to buy. So anyways, uh, price of Bitcoin, 30, all right, yes, we have a lot to talk about. Daggone, we do have a lot. So let's start yapping right now. Let's just get it over with. Look! I oh, know, price of Bitcoin, man. Fuck, uh, still sitting around here around 40. So we got a few issues that are happening here in the markets right now. Uh, huh, issue number one, and I'm sure you're aware, uh, Vladimir Putin has decided, decided to invade a sovereign country <laughs> and uh, just take over, you know, just get gangster with it and just, I'm just taking shit over, right? He just went gangster, you know, like... He uses the usual bullshit excuses, the uh, pretexts of, uh, oh, they've got Nazis, oh, they've got chemical weapons, oh, they've got nuclear, that's just, uh, that's bullshit. You know, you guys know that, right? That's just a bunch of bullshit. He just wants to invade it because he wants the wheat, he wants the oil pipelines, and, uh, you know, all that other razzle-dazzle is just for the uh, soccer moms and dads back home to uh, not feel bad about their country just invading an innocent bunch of people. So look! <clears throat> daggone, he invaded those fuck sticks and like, daggone, they're fighting though. They're daggone fighting and we're giving them javelins. <laughs> we're giving them anti-aircraft missiles. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. All right, so what does this mean, Shmar? Well, what this means is we're risk off for a minute, fuck sticks. We're going to be risk off for a second here. Uh, but I thought we were already risk off. We're waiting for the Fed Reserve. We are, and we're going to talk about that in a second. I know, we got the Fed Reserve shit next week. Let's talk about this war a little bit, though. Let's talk about this war a little bit. So this is what's called a war of choice, right? Um, most countries go to battle over some sort of reason, right? Like, we invade Afghanistan because, you know, <laughs> Al-Qaeda took down the World Trade Centers, right? Uh, um, you know, Pakistan and India fight each other in Kashmir because of borders, right? So there's a reason to it, like... But they don't just invade each other. They, they battle over that one little thing they're talking about. India and China battle over, um, what's that, that place in the Himalayas? Uh, I don't remember the name of that shit, but uh, bang, brought the bottle with me, though. Um, you know, so countries usually battle over a reason, right? This is what is known as a war of choice. In other words, there is no reason for Putin to invade Ukraine. Uh, he just decided to fucking do it, right? So it's called a war of choice. And uh, rather than a war of necessity, right? Um, and so, well, as you can see, he's invaded the place. And so it's fucked up the markets a little bit, right? Um, you know, um, Ukraine is one of the world's, what's called the bread baskets. Wheat, you know, wheat that makes bread and shit like that, right? So they have wheat and barley and uh, maize and grains, right? And so the Ukrainians supply a lot of the Middle East with their wheat, you know? And uh, so, um, 
well, obviously, with a war going on, you can't harvest wheat, can you? <laughs> Farmer can't go out there and harvest his wheat. And so this is going to create a sort of a wheat shock, uh, a commodity shock, um, uh, especially for third world countries, right? Because they use a lot, they uh, eat a lot of American, uh, sorry, uh, Ukrainian wheat. And uh, so there's that. Then obviously the big one is the oil, right? The big, the oil. And so uh, the Ukraine has many oil pipelines that go into Russia. And obviously with Putin got his hand, with Putin has, with Putin's hands on those, well, he could cut off gas supplies and oil supplies to Europe. So that's created obviously a huge funk, huge funk. That's not cool. That's not cool. You don't want a madman like that controlling your oil supplies, do you? And, uh, well, I got to tell you, uh, if you're a green energy type person, you know, you're into the green energy stuff, which is cool. Well, I, I, and if you're a stock market master, I would invest in green energy right now because everyone's realizing, oh, my goodness, right? Russia could shut the pipelines off on us, and, and we have no more oil. We have no more gas. Look at what he's, he did in... Uh, He's doing right now in, I think it's called Gestapol or something like that. Yeah, cut off all the electricity and everything. Those people are freezing. Right? It's wintertime in Ukraine. And so, um, you know, green energy right now, I mean, that's the where to invest right now. You know, Putin can turn off your oil. So can the Saudis. I mean, actually, so can the Americans. I mean, you know, America, I think we're the third largest oil producer and natural gas producer in the world. And people are realizing if you want to be sustainable, if you want to be self-sufficient and not have any be beholden to any country or even beholden to the prices of the markets. Like, look at the markets right now. Fucking oil is up at, yeah, you know, fucking over 100 bucks right now a barrel, right? Here in America, we got places where oil is at seven bucks a barrel. Uh, sorry, not a barrel. Uh, what do you call this shit? A liter, not a liter. That's 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 what we usually use. Americans use gallons. It's seven seven dollars a gallon. Ah, it's fucking expensive. People are taking the uh, public transit now a lot more because uh, that's how high the prices are. You know what I mean? Uh, getting stuck in rush hour traffic when you're burning seven dollars a gallon gasoline. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, and you got a family of four. Oh, it's not cool, right? That money could be used to spend elsewhere. And so that's what this war is doing. It's it's turning everybody green. Uh, so if you're a stock market guy, I'm not a stock market guy. You guys know I'm a Forex guy, but 007, bang! Guys like you, get into fucking, yo, just pile into green energy, man. Pile in right now. Um, if I was a stock market guy, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be throwing all the chicken at uh, green energy right now. Okay, so back to the war, though. So <clears throat> this is the dilemma. You know, it's fucking up the oil prices. America has said that they're going to uh, not use Russian oil anymore. Obviously, the Europeans don't have that luxury, seeing as 40% of all European natural gas and oil supplies come from Russia. So they can see how dependent they've been, they've become. Right back in back in 2000, America told them, "Don't fucking buy all this fucking Russian oil." Yeah, but the Germans wouldn't listen. They built Nord Stream One, that big gas pipeline from Russia, and they were in the middle of building. If you've heard about it, the Nord Stream Two pipeline, which is about to be finished this year, which Germany said they're canceling. <laughs> it's already built, and they're going to cancel it anyway. And so, you know, now we're seeing the problems with the Europeans. <clears throat> Well, what are you going to do? You need you need Russian oil, right? And, uh, you know, if Putin gets really fucking stupid about it, he could just be like, no, nah, I'm not selling it to you. Now, obviously, he's not going to do that because all Russia has to sell is oil and gas. <laughs> so if he, if he cuts off the oil to the Europeans, he cuts off his own money supply, right? It's like cutting off your nose to spite your face. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's never going to do it, but just... I mean, you never know how maniacal. Maybe he does. Maybe he finds, maybe the Chinese say, duck, we'll buy all that oil. All right, you never know. You never know. And so <clears throat> these are the dilemmas. These are the problems. 
uh, with this thing. And so th what, what, what I want you to understand about this war is I want you to see what I've been teaching you guys on this channel for a long time since the beginning of this channel. Why is the American dollar the reserve currency of the world? Okay, it's not because we're the biggest and the best, which we are, in terms of GDP. We have the biggest economy. It's not because we have the biggest and best military, which we do. But that's not really the reason. That's not why America is the reserve currency. It's because we cannot be invaded. Do you understand? I've told you guys this before, and I want you to see it right now. Imagine the euro was the reserve currency of the world. <laughs> With Russia right there. Ready to just invade motherfucker when he feels like it. With Putin right there just doing all that like that. Right? It would send the world markets crazy. Right? It would send it crazy. And that's why America, it's, it, you know, only crazy people say, well, let's change the, the American dollar. Let's, let, let's let, uh, you know, they, they want to, you know, they're really just anti-American. You know, uh, let's change the reserve currency from the American dollar. To what? To what, you fucking idiot? What do you want to change it to? The Chinese yuan? Yeah, those Chinese, those commies, they manipulate their numbers all the time. We can't use that. What do you want to change it to? The Brazilian dollar? That's not going to work. Those fuckers have gangsters and shit all up in their country. Fucking cartels are starting to grow over there. What do you want to have it? Saudi Arabia? You get fucking real. Bunch of jihadis can rise up and fucking overthrow that shit. Right? Uh, that's why... And what do you want it to be? The euro? Well, now you see what would happen if the euro was the... Well, it'll definitely not be the Russian ruble. <laughs> can't have a madman controlling the reserve currency. And it can't be the European Union because the euro, look at it. Look, they're sitting right there with a madman above them. He can invade any second, and he just has. He just did. Right? That's the reason, and I've told you this before. That's the reason America is the reserve currency, and everybody wants it the reserve currency. If you're a moron out there who's like, yeah, let's change it from the dollar. The question is to what, you fucking idiot? To what? And for what purpose? We all want a global stable money. The only global stable money in the world, well, is the American dollar, but also the Canadian dollar. But anyway, whatever. The Canadian dollar could do it too, but the American dollar, right? Because America cannot be invaded. Nobody can attack America. Nobody can launch war, wage war on America. If Chinese want to wage war, well, okay, well, you could shoot missiles at us. We have missile defense. But if you want to land troops, 200,000 troops, <laughs> you want to land them here in America, well, you got to bring those troops all across the Pacific Ocean to come here and land on our shores. Yeah, we will blow your ass up in the water before you get halfway here. If you want to come from the eastern coast, all right, fuck stick, you're going to have to bring your troops all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. And again, we will blow your bitches at, bitch asses up before you even get halfway across the ocean. That's why people want... That's why every market master, every hedge fund master, every bankster, we want the American dollar to be the reserve currency because it is safe. You understand? It's safe. You get it? War. It's about war. Okay? This is what I've been teaching you guys for fucking four years now, right? That's why the American dollar is reserve currency. That's why you don't want any other country being the reserve currency because they're all susceptible to war. Not to mention just the bullshit corruption and shit they have in their countries already, right? I mean, you know, that's a whole other ball game, right? <laughs> We're not going to make the Indian rupee the fucking <laughs> reserve currency of the world, are we? All right, not with all that corruption. And so, so now you're getting to see the example of what I've been preaching to you guys for the past four years. This is why, right? War is going on. All this crazy stuff is going on around the world. But what? The dollar is strong. The dollar is stable. Now, imagine the euro was the reserve currency. Fuck. We'd be in a shitstorm. I tell you right now, I'd be liquidating all my crypto. <laughs> right? So that's the reason, okay, guys? So uh, I've taught you that, but now I want you to see it for your very fucking own eyes. Okay? Because you got a madman that can fucking... One missile shot into Poland <laughs> would fucking tank the euro. Tank it, right? We can't have that. Uh, that's why the American dollar is, so, is the reserve currency 
Yes, the American economy is the biggest. Yes, the American military is the biggest. But that's not the real reason. It's because you cannot invade America. So everybody knows they all own American dollars all around the world, every country around the world. Any country in the world, you can take an American dollar and go spend it, right? You can't spend a Zimbabwean dollar in America. Fuck, you can't even spend a euro in America. You got to go to the exchange thing to get it exchanged. But an American dollar is spent worldwide. Why? Because it's the most stable because it will never be invaded, right? Now, America could obviously have a housing crash like we did in 2008 and fuck up the dollar. Yeah, but our Fed Reserve steps in and stabilizes everything. Or like this, right? Coronavirus came. All right, then we stepped in, launched quantitative easing, QE, stabilize everything, right? And people know we're going to do that, right? They, they have confidence. Obviously, America is going to stabilize their money, right? And so this is the example. So this now you see why. Why isn't the euro the fucking reserve currency? Because they can be invaded anytime. Why isn't the Chinese yuan the reserve currency? Because they're a bunch of communists and they manipulate their data. <laughs> you know, like that's it. Why isn't any other country? Because you can all be invaded. You've all got terrorists running around. You've all got corruption. Here in America, it's just straight cash, homie, and we cannot be invaded. All right, so we've talked about that. Now, so this war, all right, so <coughs> we got to just see what's going to go on with it. It looks like this fuckstick Putin, he looks like he's setting up false flags to get ready to launch chemical attacks. Now, if he does that, yeesh. This economy is really, the global economy is really going to take a beat down. I mean, you talk about risk off. We're going to be risk off off if he fucking launches a chemical attack. And so we do not want that. What we want is just some sort of peace treaty, some sort of something like that to stop the war. Um, uh, I was talking to some of the brothers the other day. You know, China's sitting there. Xi Jinping, he's laughing his ass off. He's watching Russia. Two things with, with Xi Jinping. He's looking at this militarily, and now everybody sees the truth, and the world is, the world is, so let's look at it this way. The world fears the Russian army. But now we get to see the Russian army actually in action against a real country, not just bombing jihadis in Syria, but against a, a real army. Yeah, and it's not going so well, is it? <laughs> Those fucking idiots can't even take over Ukraine, right? Ukraine has a real army, but not big or anything. It's not mega. Yeah, but the Russians can't take it over. And so this is an embarrassment to Putin, to Putin's generals, uh, to their military. You know, this sort of, this sort of, you know, from the Soviet days, we all have a, a we just sort of assume, yeah, Russia's powerful. Russia's got a great military. Well, we can see right now their military ain't shit, is it? They're fighting a bunch of Ukrainians with javelin missiles and stinger missiles and can't fucking enter the big cities. Yeah, they've taken over cities in the south and the east. Yeah, those are little shitty cities that were sort of left undefended anyway. But now they're trying to go for Kharkiv and, uh, and, uh, what's it called? Uh, Kiev. Yeah, they can't do it, can they? Yet, yet, we'll see, we'll see. You know, you can see how pathetic the Russian military is. You know, when America goes and invades somewhere, or NATO, you know, we usually go as a coalition, as NATO coalition. What happens? We go, we bomb the shit out of their military, yeah, and all the buildings are still standing, right? All the people's homes are still there. We don't destroy civilian buildings, right? Russia, they went in <laughs> and they can't, they can't kill the Ukrainian military. So now they're trying to create a population fiasco by bombing the citizens, right? You see the pictures of them, like these are building blocks being bombed, like buildings with no military thing around it at all, right? They're basically terrorizing the citizens now because they can't defeat the Ukrainian army. And so all, all of us around the world are now looking at this and saying, wow, we've all been afraid of Russia for what? These guys are fucking, they're shit. They're shit. They're shit. So, you know, the Chinese are looking over there and they're, they're having a good old time. Xi Jinping's having a good old time. He's realizing, oh, this military threat we thought was so threatening isn't so threatening at all. 
in terms of conventional warfare. Yes, Russia has all those nukes. Yes, they could nuke you. But Russia knows if they nuke you, you're going to nuke them back, and that would be the end of it. So it would be suicide, called MAD, M-A-D, Mutually Assured Destruction. So Russia is not going to use strategic nukes anytime soon because they know that would be the end of Russia, right? Um, and they, they might use tactical nukes is what people are afraid of now. You know, there's a difference between a strategic nuke, which is the kind of shit America has dropped on Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which destroys a whole city at once, right? It destroys a whole city. But there's other nukes that they're called tactical nukes. And a tactical nuke can take out just one part of a city. So, for instance, with a tactical nuke, if I, if I were invading America and I wanted to take over New York, right? New York has five boroughs, right? Manhattan, uh, Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Well, if I'm an invader and I, I want to take over New York, but I don't want to destroy the whole fucking place because obviously it makes a lot of money, so I don't want to destroy the place, I can use a tactical nuke, which will destroy, let's say, just Manhattan or just Brooklyn or just the Bronx, but the rest of New York will be there. And so that's what people are worried about right now is that Putin is either going to use chemical weapons or tactical nukes, which would up the game once someone uses a tactical nuke, well, now tactical nukes become ow, sort of fair game to use, right? And so that's a bummer. And so uh, that wouldn't be good. And so let's hope he doesn't do that. But So that's what's going down. Um, this war is causing our crypto to really stay here because, well, what about the Fed Reserve shit, Shamari? So let's finish with the war. So that's the war, okay, guys? Putin, Putin he fucked up. He just showed he's exposed the weakness of his army to the whole world. So he's going to double and triple down. That's probably chemical and tactical nukes. We'll see. But what we want is just some sort of peace treaty of some kind and let this thing be over. All right. So that's the war part. Now the Fed Reserve. So the Fed Reserve is going to um, give interest rate numbers next week. Um, now, the beauty of what's happening now is the quantitative easing ending the ending of the quantitative easing program is that you know the fed reserve told us months in advance right they told us in january they're ending qe so all the traders and everyone have uh, positioned themselves for a interest rate rise so uh we shouldn't see any major disruption or anything in the markets because yeah, well, all the big masters, they've already positioned themselves now. It's been three months. They've had three months to do it. So um, as far as the Fed Reserve thing, we'll see. Are they going to raise it 25 points, 50 points? And with the numbers that came out yesterday, uh, inflation was, went up 7 point, I don't remember exactly, 7.6%, I believe. So that's mega. Uh, we could even see the Fed Reserve raise interest rates by 75 points. Uh We'll see. But it's not going to be a big deal. Our big deal right now is this fucking war. We need Putin to stop what he's fucking doing. And uh, all the markets will just go right on back to normal. But you have to remember, the markets live forever. What have I told you? Regimes come and go. Wars come and go. Genocides come and go. Caliphates come and go. <laughs> Natural disasters come and go. Yeah, but the markets live forever. So, uh... You're in the goody room. You're in the markets. So don't worry. Uh, eventually, all wars end. Um, you know, eventually shit passes. But now you get to see the real. Now, now you guys are feeling it the real. Like, you see how world events impact your market. All right? It's not what's on that fucking little chart that makes the price of something go up and down. It's what's happened in the real world that makes the price of something go up and down. And that chart just shows you what happened, okay? The chart doesn't make it happen. The chart just shows you what happened, okay? And uh, like I said, there's no cycles, right? Yeah, we're in a new cycle, really? Well, why why the crypto just fall? Yeah, because of war, you idiot. War doesn't follow your fucking little cycle. N bullshit, okay? There's no cycles. The charts don't uh, make anything. What matters is life. That's why you trade life. That's why you have to trade the fundamentals of the market, okay? 
And so the fundamentals of the crypto market are solid, are solid. This is going to be the year of regulatory clarity. Even though there's a war going on, yeah, well, didn't Joe Biden just sign that executive order on cryptocurrency the other day? Yeah, life goes on. That's why I said markets go on, right? I'm about to read you, but Romania just did uh, with Elrond, right? Markets go on, okay? Your news shows you all war, 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 war. Yeah, but, wow, well, depending on what news you watch, but <clears throat> the markets live on, okay? So look, all right, good to be back with you. Let us proceed how we do it. So, uh, oh, look at Bitcoin went up since I talked to you. <laughs> all right, top 10 of the day, brothers and sisters. You know who they are. Still, the usual suspects. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, USD coin, Terra, XRP, Cardano, Solana, and Avalanche holding on the number 10. All right, let's look at market moves of the day. Single digits up, single digits down. 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 Two, single digits up, two, single digits down. All right. Let's see who made money today. If you see anything in here like, or sorry, let's see who lost money today. If you see anything here like, go get it because it's on sale. Bang! Top 10 losers, Arweave, eCash, Anchor Protocol, IOTA, Phantom, Pax, Global, Algorand, Clayton, Cello, and Terra USD. All right, let's see who made money today. Bang, top 10 gainers. Whoa, look at these gains. Oh, yeah, there's some gains around these motherfuckers right here, motherfucker. Look, top 10 gainers. Stax, Kadena, Thorchain. I know, I heard about something about that Thorchain thing today. Zcash, Polkadot, Fade of Fuel, Dash, Elrond, Anchor, and Chili's. I'm about to read you about Chili's right now. All right, let's look at total mark cap. What are we working with? All right. All right, total mark cap is $1.778 trillion. Uh, again, I don't have a card, so I don't know what to compare it to. So we'll just leave it at that, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll have our comparisons and stuff. 24-hour volume, $86.6 billion. And that is good for that. All right, so I am going to cut this video here and upload it. And then while I'm uploading, I'm actually going to do the stories that I told you we're going to do, okay? So let me drop this piece of chicken on you. And then we'll get back to the other. So look, let's get back to the Death Star for a second. Bah! So I'm not the Death Star anymore, right? I got a kitchen in here now, fuck. Right before it was black and it had the picture of the the evil angel, right? Like a Death Star. It's not much of a Death Star now when you got a fucking kitchen and a bottle of wine sitting on a table. <laughs> it's not really a Death Star anymore. Look, we're gonna get a Death Star-ish. All right, we're gonna get a Death Star-ish, but for now, let me cut this video, upload it to you, and I'm gonna see you in the next video, which I'm gonna start doing right now as I upload, and we're gonna do the stories, all right? So look, this is Shamari Clark. Bang! For now, over and out. Whoops. Hold on. Bang! Now we're over and out.